Yo, today we got a question that's a really good follow-up to our conversation yesterday about sex, relationships, and women. And today we're gonna talk about your mission, your purpose, and whether or not your partner is supporting you or an anchor on your purpose-driven lifestyle. So we got a question here from screen name, we've got Hi. Right? Uh, he goes on and said, Elliot, say Elliot, I'm a huge fan of your work, especially your philosophy and outlook on life. I've been inspired by what you said in your videos about giving advice on choosing your own path in life. I'm in a dilemma that has torn me for some time, and I would like your advice. I've been going out with my girlfriend for about a year, and I love her very much. She's an amazing woman, and I'd like to spend my life with her. The problem is I'm passionate about music, specifically creating music, and I'm in a band. I'm barely starting to pursue my love for creating music, but my girlfriend wants me to get a degree in something to have a backup plan because it's hard to have stable income with music. I want to make her happy, but at the same time, I don't want to get in debt for a degree I don't really care about, whatever it may be. I don't want to get a degree in music because it can cost a lot of money and many times is useless. I want to create music and sell my music and tour with my band, but she wants me to have a stable job and career. I want to have both her and music, but if I'm not going to get a degree, she may end up breaking up with me because she doesn't want to struggle financially and be with someone who is unstable. Any advice, man? Well, quite a bit in that little piece there, brother man. And uh, I read your question and I decided, boy, since there are so many different ways to start, let's choose one. And the fir very first place I'd like to begin with you is by sharing my experience. I mean, really that's all I can ever do is share my experience because anything that comes from a book or comes from someone else or comes from some celestial idea doesn't have the grounding of, this is what works for me. And when I first started dating Colleen, when we were in high school, I was already very clear about my purpose. My uncle had introduced me to strength training. I had been playing football and I knew I was going to either be a professional athlete or a coach. Well, I ended up being both, but I also had a girlfriend. And very early on, we started having conversations about what it would be like to live a life together. And I warned her. She'll, she might even talk about this. I think she spoke about this in an interview we did once. I warned her, I said, look, I'm going hard. I've got a mission. It's going to be a bumpy road I'm on. There are going to be challenges. I'm ready for that struggle, but I'm never going to stop until I get where I'm going. I love you, and I would like to have you come along with me. This is where I'm going. And you can either come with me or not. I said that to her when I was probably about 17 or 18 years old. And you can see the result. I'm well on my path, dominating it, reaching my mission, clarifying my purpose. And my wife is the perfect partner, teammate, while I attack the world and get things done that need to be done through me which is to become a stronger version of myself and empower others. I'm very clear about my purpose, very clear about my mission, and I design my relationships around making sure that I'm everything that I should be. Here's the thing we need to understand about masculine and feminine energy. It's not a right thing or, it's a, or a wrong thing. Masculine and feminine energy are like the yin yang symbol. We need it for completeness. And when I say masculine and feminine, I'm not talking just about penis and vagina. I'm not speaking specifically about men and women. I'm talking about the predominant energy that men typically carry in varying degrees and the predominant energy that women carry in varying degrees. The particular men that, the energy that men carry is masculine, right? And masculine energy is, energy is very purpose-driven, is very single-minded, is very mission-oriented, going in a particular direction, right? Men's concentration, or the masculine concentration, the masculine trait associated with focus can also be a detriment, right? I've got children, 
I've got three girls and a boy. When I call for the girls, whether they're on their iPads, they're reading something or watching TV, when I call for the girls, there's an immediate, yes, daddy, and they come. They relate to me. When I call Benjamin, maybe because he's the youngest and he's a brat, no, he's not a brat, he's a boy. When I call Benjamin, he might not hear me because he's focused in on the thing that he's doing, whatever it is that he's doing. I can get upset, but I gotta realize the dude's focused. Benjamin, no call. Benjamin, I go to find out what he's doing. He's playing with some Legos. And I say, dude, did you hear me calling you? Uh, no, daddy, and he starts to explain what he's doing with the thing that he's doing. If I went up to one of my daughters and they were playing a game and I said, did you hear what I was doing? They'd probably invite me to join. That's why I've worn tiaras and, and dresses and makeup and shit like that. And tea parties, right? I'm a dad to girls. The masculine mind is focused, right? Or the, and, and again, it's just a generality. Doesn't mean that we, we all have masculine and feminine energy, traits. If you study Jungian psychology, Carl Jung refers it to the anima and animus psychological aspects that we all carry. But the feminine energy is much more associated with relating, right? Relating, relationship, nurturing. And in order for that to happen, you need a certain level, or women need a certain level of stability. This is why women nest when they're nursing. Women, and that's why even if you look at female cats, right? Like if they're, if they're going to build their life, which means make more people, which is associated with relationships, this is what the feminine does, and there are hormones associated with it like oxytocin, they, like, they need to find a stable little cozy area. When I say stable, I mean just like out of the, not, don't, you don't have wind and rain on you, right? Stability is very, everything in life is very subjective. It's the law of relativity, right? Relative stability could mean, well, I've got a roof over my head versus I've got $10,000 or $50,000 in the bank. Completely relative. The cat is safe. The female cat will allow herself to uh, swim in all her femininity and share her love with her young ones in an alley under a, under, under a dumpster. I'm not saying that that's what needs to happen. What I'm saying is that you've got to realize the contrast between the masculine and the feminine energy. And you, we, we've got to learn how to play with each other by recognizing honoring, respecting the natural incl inclinations in one another. I recognize the feminine in my wife and I do my best to create an environment and a life so that she can blossom fully. But she also, very early on, gave me permission, gave me room, but not only that, but encouraged me on my purpose, on my mission, dominating, and she, has reaped the gifts for supporting me in that way. You know, a lot of the ideas in the Bible may seem outdated, um, but you know, there are various maxims that are, are, are steeped in wisdom. And one of them, which oftentimes gets misunderstood or bastardized and even used as a, as a, as a weapon, both by men and women, is this statement that me, women sh should respect their men. Men, love your woman, love your wife. But if you understand masculine femin feminine energy and how to get along with one another, you'll start to realize, you begin to realize that yes, it, that word respect makes sense, meaning that a man is on his path and you gotta let him be on his path. You can't nag him off his path. This is what a lot of women try to do. This is what a lot of men allow themselves to be done to. Like yourself, you're about to get in that trap, dude. You love her, I get it, you love her. But mission is number one for men. Hard pill to swallow. Can it be done? Can you have a wonderful relationship and mission? Well, all I can do is share my experience. The next one is Financial stability is a myth. Now this could be a totally other, a, a second video, and I kind of already started relating uh, to you this idea of relativity. But one of the things that we've got to come to grips ourselves so that we can relate it to other people, especially those that don't understand our mission. Money comes after mission. Mission is first also. Comes before women, comes before money. Mission is number one. And when it comes to mission, you've got to realize that when you're on your path, you're actually building up internal 
resources. It's who you're becoming that matters. Another one from Jesus is don't build up your material wealth in this world. He says something to the effect of like, don't build up your wealth here in this world. Build up your, world, your wealth in my kingdom. The kingdom within, right? This is the kingdom here, inside, crossroads, right in my heart, right in your heart. You gotta understand that that's where you're gaining wealth. Because currency can be devalued, which it is, there's inflation. The dollar could at any moment, because we do live in a tumultuous world, the dollar or whatever currency you're using, you could talk to the Germans, you could talk to the, to the, to the Greeks, you could talk to various nations who've had their currency collapse, and what you think is $10,000 in your bank account is actually worth shit. Ask the Russians. I've heard stories about them using their currency in order to stoke fires because it was worth nothing. Now you spent your entire world building up these material wealth and it dissolves into nothing and you are empty because you're a man on no mission, but you've got your girlfriend. Weak. Finally, dude, I'll leave you with one more. If you read my newsletter today, I did not post it on my blog because, well, it's a special message that is intended just for those who are on the VIP newsletter. If you read my message today, you got the bit of wisdom from one of our fellow kings about not giving up. And he refers to dying before he gives up on his path. That is the type of commitment I'm talking about. Yesterday when I made the video about commitment, devotion, discipline, it means you dominate your path till you die, my friend. So even if you go and start your music company, you begin with your band, things don't work out, your girlfriend leaves you, you find yourself in a very compromised and even depressive place. Understand that those challenges, those heartbreaks, those things falling apart are merely opportunities for you to grow stronger, my friend. Embrace them fully. And finally, when you embrace your mission fully, when you go full bore on your path and you decide that you're not going to give up until you die, you offer the world your gift. That's what this is all about, guys. When I say become the strongest version of yourself, it is only one half of the equation. We offer our gifts to the world when we're living our passion, when we're living our purpose. And your partner, your woman, your man, whoever it is, who you're deciding to build your life with, side by side, can either be an anchor or a booster. Someone who supports you, someone who helps you. And if your woman's vision is too small, if you can't enroll her in the purpose, the mission, the vision, the dominance by which you want to take this world and give it your energy and make love to everything that you do, then maybe you need a new woman. Done. Hey.